To be honest, I am very pleased that Ford is one of those companies that take an active position in technical development and are not afraid to introduce all their developments into production cars. As they say, who does not take risks, he does not wipe his opponent's nose. A striking example of this was the Ford Focus 3, which, with its appearance in 2011, for a long time left behind its main competitor and, at the same time, its former, no, not wife, platform, sister, named Mazda 3. At a time when the Japanese were just starting to develop the Skyactiv line of motors and chassis for future generations, the followers of the great Henry managed to succeed on all fronts, creating new engines, gearboxes, and options that are still not in the Matryoshka doll. Is it absolute leadership? At first glance, it may seem so, but in fact, the owners of the Focus 3 did not sense the obvious superiority of the model. Why? To begin with, we note that the civilian Focus never received turbocharged engines of the EcoBoost series. Under its hood fell, basically, 1.6 liter Duratec atmospheric units, 105 and 125 horsepower, which, both in design and in characteristics, are more reminiscent of the last century than the concepts of the future. Moreover, sometime after the start of sales, the 1.6 engine line was replenished with more than a modest 85 horsepower. And this despite the fact that the phase change system was not excluded from the gas distribution. All three variations of the same engine differ in the degree of software suffocation. However, the owners of 125 horsepower versions by 120 to 130,000 mileage learn with sadness that they will have to remove the awful of two catalysts at once. Therefore, the quality of the fuel poured on these machines should be taken more seriously, because there are as many as four oxygen sensors in the exhaust system. Accordingly, the probability of failure of at least one of them is twice as high as that of weaker engines. The 1.6-liter line of engines is united by one common problem, deposits in the combustion chamber, which led to poor starts and uneven operation of the unit. The problem manifested itself even on warranty machines, which were filled in with a new control program, after which the ailment went away forever. Owners are periodically disturbed by oil leaks through the solenoid valves of the phase change system. There is only one cardinal measure, the replacement of these elements. The other engine for the Focus was a 2-liter 150-horsepower GDI chain unit. Let Duratec 1.8 be taken as its basis, but Japanese Mazda engineers planted the phase change system and direct injection on it. More interestingly, the 2-liter engine proved to be virtually trouble-free. There are, of course, owners who encountered malfunctions of the high-pressure fuel pump and injectors, but this happened mainly due to poor quality and untimely service. The unit is especially reverent about oil change intervals, which are best reduced to 9 to 10,000 kilometers. The common weak point of the entire line of gasoline engines is the right support of the internal combustion engine, which rarely travels more than 50,000 kilometers without tears, and at the same time costs about 11,000 rubles. Shameless, in our opinion. Ford's pricing policy has led to the fact that it turned out to be much cheaper to purchase an original part with the Volvo logo. Diesel on the Ford Focus 3 is extremely rare. You know, serving them correctly is much more difficult. However, in the end, there will be fewer problems with such a machine, because heavy fuel engines are equipped only with power shift wet clutches, the same as on the Mondeo, Kuga, S-Max, and Galaxy. By the way, about gearboxes. This time, Ford completely forgot about the traditional automatic and about the CBTs, which used to go to anything, but not to the Russian versions of the Focus. Robot. This is what we need, the developers probably thought, looking at the successful experience of selling original spare parts for Volkswagen Group cars equipped with DSG. Joke. Of course, Ford wants to keep up with global trends in this way, and even despite the fact that VAG specialists have not yet cured their two-clutch gearbox from childhood diseases they tried to make their power shift gearbox hassle-free. But, alas, just like other robotic transmissions, PS needs constant updates of brains. Many owners completely got to replace the TCM unit. Shivering at start and slash or when shifting, as a rule, means that it is time to fix a leak in the gearbox input shaft oil seal or engine crankshaft. This is followed by a mandatory flushing of the clutches, followed by adaptation. If the problem is tightened, then expensive clutches, unfortunately, will have to be replaced with new ones. A metallic rattle when shifting, as well as the loss of a number of gears, indicates a jam pressure fork. There is only one cardinal method of treatment, replacement of the part. 
you can't do without a little bloodshed in cases where flashing the gearbox control unit does not help get rid of jerks when switching. Without a new set of clutches, a full recovery is unlikely to come. Interesting fact. On the used car market, there is a huge number of applicants for the non-existent Ford Focus 3 with a conventional automatic transmission. Car dealers, in turn, are only too happy to expose power shift accordingly. In appearance, automatic as automatic, nothing special, until the first problems arise. If you have already bought a reluctant Focus with power shift, then you should not panic. With proper care, the transmission behaves quite predictably. The main thing is to avoid sudden acceleration, use manual mode more often, put the selector P before long stops and traffic jams and, of course, follow the release of new control programs. Needless to say, there are almost no problems with the mechanical transmission. All that is required from the owner of a car with a handle is to ensure that oil does not leak out of the box through the drive seals, mainly the right one. However, versions with AMT are also not without this drawback. Another innovation for the Focus was the electric power steering, which, most likely, has already supplanted the traditional power steering forever. Improvements were also needed here, because many owners were faced with automatic steering in the wrong direction, as well as with the sudden decrease in the efficiency of the mechanism. In most cases, dealers changed the Euro, and together with the rail, which, in turn, without the participation of the amplifier, can throw trouble. In general, the problem is known. Many owners of not only Focus and not only Ford face such a feature. Knocks when shaking the steering wheel are emitted by a plastic sleeve of the steering shaft, which wears out one or two and needs to be replaced. As practice has shown, installing a new rail solves the problem only temporarily, but the steel part carved by Uncle Vanya is almost the best way out of the situation. In the suspension, the weak point is the rear shock absorbers, which cannot tolerate excessive loads and by 50,000 kilometers often let a hydraulic tear through the stem seals. The remaining parts of the chassis are much more enduring and the following investments usually fall on the line of 100,000 kilometers. By this point, the front wheel bearings, stabilizer struts and front shock absorbers usually die. Silent blocks of levers hold without problems for 150,000 or more and the same elements of the rear suspension do not require replacement up to 200,000 m. In our opinion, the indicator is very worthy. The braking system is also picky. It does not annoy with squeaks of pads and knocks of calipers. The front pads on cars with 1.6 live quietly for 40,000 kilometers, while the clutch resource of 2.0 liter cars, as a rule, is one and a half times less. Ford Focus 3 rarely presents problems with the body to its owners. The most sore place is the heated windshield, which is expensive, and scratches and bursts easily and unexpectedly from a harmless, at first glance, impact. A crack out of nowhere is another common phenomenon that appears most often in cold weather. It is also worth knowing that poorly functioning locks are the result of skewed door hinges. Sometimes, even with the naked eye, you can observe the gaps between these body elements that differ from each other. No matter how much you would like the opposite, the Russian assembly, Sevilosk, left its mark on the Ford Focus 3. Moving on to completely harmless moments, we note that the Focus sometimes fogs up the headlights. Some owners also change the Ford badge on the trunk lid due to the coating peeling off it. Despite relatively cheap materials, the interior of the Focus 3 retains its original appearance for a long time. The only exceptions are the front seats, on which it is better to put on covers in advance, as well as a gear knob with an easily sliding coating. Air duct deflectors should be handled with care as possible otherwise their delicate plastic may crack. Crickets in the cabin usually appear in the center console area and in the door cards, so eliminating unnecessary sounds is usually not easy. Another common childhood disease of the third focus does not allow opening the trunk, but this already applies to the electrical part, since damage to the circuit in the place of its bend leads to button failure. The manufacturer took into account the shortcoming and equipped dealers with upgraded wiring harnesses, for which there have been no complaints yet. Lovers of good music should be aware that this model's tweeters in the doors are also reputed to be short-lived. To determine their malfunction simply by the opposite creaking sound, even at a low volume of the audio system. Cars equipped with a rain sensor also have their own peculiarity. Do not be surprised if on a dry sunny day the wipers begin to rub the windshield and there is no need to be nervous in vain if the car ignores precipitation. True, due to the insecurity of driving with poor visibility, be prepared to take action manually.
with such a list of systematic problems, the Focus 3 generation, of course, does not look like a reliability leader, but you cannot call it an outsider either. The engines are relatively trouble-free, the chassis is strong, there are very few weaknesses among the auxiliary equipment. As we can see, the biggest headache is the power shift robot, which, in fact, did not come as a surprise to us. However, what prevented the manufacturer from selling versions with the conventional reliable hydraulic machine as an alternative to AMT? Decrease in revenue from sold parts or an attempt to reduce the cost of production. In any case, it is very interesting which cars would be bought more. 